When was the last time that you had a complete medical checkup? And you might be saying, oh, well, I went to my doctor last year and he did probably the same exams that he does always because I have a hypertension and he does always the same follow-up. Yeah, you could have a disease or a prior disease. You could have hypertension or diabetes or something and you could have checkups because of that disease. But when was the last time that you did something prioritizing your age, looking for your health in order to prevent something or in order to treat something. Because doing regular checkups, it's absolutely essential. And after 50, after we turn 50, we could start thinking that it's going to be the second half of our life. Really, the importance of doing this is to work everything around well being. So again, when was the last time that you did a complete medical checkup? And I'm going to tell you what I think it could be a medical checkup that you can do at least once a year. There are things that, it could, that they could be done maybe twice a year. Please, again, go and talk to your physician, which could, cause be, which could be those things, especially the blood tests. Maybe if you do it three or two times a year, it could be much better than if you just do them once a year. Even if you don't have a previous medical condition. If you have a previous medical condition, like if you have diabetes, maybe checkups every three months could be absolutely essential. But there are other things that maybe if you check them out every two, ever, yeah, maybe two or three times a year, it could be absolutely beneficial. Why? When we do that, let's remember that the two main reasons Two main causes of death in the world are cardiovascular disease and cancer. The best thing that we can do for cancer, it's prevention. The best thing that we can do for cardiovascular disease, also it's prevention because it's absolutely preventable. What are going to be those annual checkups that you're going to have after you're 50? First thing I want you to be sure you're taking care of is your mental status, your mental issues. And people might think, well, but I don't have depression or I don't have anxiety. I feel, I feel okay. Yeah, but we don't take care of our mind. We don't stop for a minute to see how are my beliefs? How are my feelings? How is my personality? Am I absolutely fine with the ways that I react? To life that i react to pain that i react to anger and this is important just talk to someone talk to someone that could be a, a psychiatrist or a psychologist and see how how is that part of your life or if you don't want to talk to anyone at least maybe get a book or listen to a podcast or see how is your mind really stop for a second or have a meditation sessions the first thing after that then you're going to do it's go and perform on your own for you a physical exam and do it in a maybe periodically but maybe i don't know once a month twice a month touch yourself don't be afraid touch your neck touch your mouth take a look at your mouth on the inside see how is your manual maybe if you have something on your scalp ask your spouse to check on your scalp to check on your back to look at your skin. You can touch your armpit, you can touch your breast, you can touch your abdomen, you can touch your genitals. When you have a good physical exam, they can go and check your neck, they can check your thyroid, they can go and listen to your heart, listen to your lungs, listen to your intestine. Touching your abdomen, if you're a man having a prostate exam, of course, those things are absolutely important. Having a physician to take a look at your skin, if there is any kind of lesion that could be necessary to address, necessary to take a biopsy. So again, if you're a man, you can take care of your prostate. It's absolutely necessary starting 40, but also when you're 50, to have this annually, you should have an exam, physical exam on your prostate. For women, it's absolutely necessary to have a mammogram or a mammography. Also, we need to look for colorectal cancer. Colorectal cancer is one of the most common cancers right now. And it's absolutely related to having a poor diet, to having a diet full of ultra processed food and very low in fiber. After this, you're going also to have an eye and ear checkups. Why? Because most of the people don't realize that they have problems. It happened to me when I was 15. I was sitting in a, in a beach and I saw my dad's friend, he had his sunshades and I thought it was fun to wear them. So I put the sunshades on and I was like, oh my God. And everything turned out being high definition. It, oh my, 4K, what's going on? Well, when I wear these glasses, Everything looks perfect. When I don't wear them, it's kind of blurry. So, and people don't notice. And it happens also when people are losing their ears 
they're hearing. You say, have you noticed that you're not listening well? I, I listen fine. No, I've called you three times and you haven't heard me. So let's go and see what are going to be those blood tests that are going to be absolutely necessary for a woman looking at estradiol, look for progesterone, DHEA, which is called dehydroepiandosterone, looking also for testosterone. The two ways of testosterone, which is total and free testosterone, are absolutely necessary. But also looking the ones that are produced in the brain, which is LH and FSH, that tell the ovaries and tell all, all the genital parts of the women to see how everything is working on their menopause yet or or if they are not under menopause. And for men, we need to check again, as I told you, for their prostate, but also check for testosterone, free testosterone, total testosterone, and also to check for DHEA. The next part is go and check your lipid profile. If you have any doubts on this, after looking at this video, I encourage you to go and see the video that I left you down here in the description that it's called, is there any good or, ba or bad cholesterol or something like that, showing you that there is no such a thing as a good or a bad cholesterol and what are really the exams that we should do and how to understand them. Lipid profile, it's important. It, should, it can give you an idea or how things are working when you have total cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, VLDL cholesterol. And I say the word cholesterol because it's just showing the amount of cholesterol inside of those particles. But the lipid panel is just showing you the weight of the cholesterol, nothing else. If you want to know the kind of particles that you have, you need to ask for two tests, which is ApoB, which counts how many particles do you have to carry that cholesterol around. And there is another thing, it doesn't count the amount of particles, but it's another protein that attached to the LDL particle, which is called LP little a. After checking how are your lipids, you're going to check your glucose. How are you gonna check on your glucose, fasting glucose, and postprandial glucose. What does that mean? You're going to eat or you're going to have a glucose low and you're going to have it checked after that. Why? Because we want to know how is all the balance and how do you respond to glucose after you take it. You can have it absolutely normal when you're fasted, but a lot of people have problems after they eat. What else are you going to address? You're going to check on hemoglobin A1c. Hemoglobin A1c shows you how it's been the average of glucose on the past three months. Some patients, they know when they, that they're going to have their blood tested and they, they eat like a saint a week before getting the tests. So probably it's going to show that they're quite well. But when you check on the hemoglobin A1C, then you're going to say, ha, you've been bad. You've been eating a lot of donuts. You've been e eating a lot of things that you shouldn't be eating. What also are you going to test? You're going to test on liver function. You're going to go and see for your ALT, your AST, and also ask your physician for GGT. GGT is also very, very important and gives you a lot of clues on maybe how different things on the liver are working. You're going to check on your kidney function. You're going to check on your creatinine and also your BUN, blood ureic nitrogen. And when you check on those things, and if you need something additional, if you need something additional, then ask your physician if you're gonna need something additional. But this is probably the basic. You're also gonna check in your thyroid function. Absolutely important. Remember that your thyroid manages how much you're burning. It, it manages the regeneration of cells. It's absolutely important. Check your TSH, check on free T4, free T3 and also antibodies. It's not just measuring TSH, just measuring TSH is an absolute mistake. Check on your uric acid. Not only if you have gout, some people they don't have gout, but they have an elevated uric acid. And this could prevent in a very early stage for things on your brain, for cardiovascular disease, for being overweighted, for having metabolic conditions, and for having also arthritis, of course, because of gout. But it's not just important. We have a lot of data showing that uric acid is an inflammatory marker, which is absolutely spectacular. All the information that we can take from there. Also check on your vitamin D. We lack of vitamin D because we are not exposed to sunlight as we should. We don't take enough calcium as we should. We don't take magnesium from our diet as we should. And also because we don't take enough vitamin D from our diet. So most of the people are chronically depleted from vitamin D. And finally, 
it's important to take inflammation tests such as RCP, reactive C protein. If you have the high sensitivity reactive C protein elevated, it shows that the inner layer of all of your arteries, it's in play. And it's, a, it's showing that you might have chronic inflammation. And if you're under 50, or if you're 50, or if you're 60, or if you're 70, but you have a hard worker, we need to do something even bigger in order to bring this down because it's showing me systemic inflammation. But again, I want to emphasize on that the best thing that we can do is working on prevention. When I work on prevention, when I know on the prevention for cancer, when the prevention for cardiovascular disease, and the prevention for some other things that can be just going around, I can know what to do. But there are things that we really can treat and reverse. We can reverse prediabetes. We can reverse diabetes in some stages. Six years ago, people said, no, 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 diabetes, it's completely unreversible. We know for sure right now that it's completely reversible, some stages. And again, the best way for the preparation for you, for your exams, for taking care of your life, it's just by stopping for a moment, knowing that it's okay, knowing that if you feel you're afraid, if you feel a little bit anxious, it's fine, don't worry. You are taking care of you, which is the best thing and the best tool that we can do to have good health. Remember that health, it's not just an outcome that comes from the universe because I was too lucky or because I wasn't lucky at all. Health is something that we build every single day and it's based on the daily little decisions that we make, on those daily little acts. If you think that this information is useful, please remember to share it with your contacts. And also before you leave, please remember to hit the like button, to subscribe to the channel, and also to click the bell. So every time we make new videos, you're going to be the first one to be notified. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next time.